it's uh, it's time to uh, to start this uh, polar meeting and uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Stefan Santucci uh, who is going to give the talk today and uh, many of you know uh, Stefan because he uh, he was in our lab for in Oslo for a long time and we have been collaborated with him I think for for many years after uh, yeah <laughs> And uh, with a very fruitful collaboration, working on fracture on uh, yeah, on forest media also, and uh, yeah, working on uh, several other topics as well. And we will talk us tell us about one uh, experiment today, on peeling on or tape. And uh, yeah, Stefan took his PhD at uh, INS in 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 Leo, and he worked on start to work on fracture, and uh, worked on uh, you know. The heat dissipation and fracture as well, and uh, and have continued on that after now. Uh, actually, very, it has been very nice because we have worked with uh, uh, Renault and Tom Vincent on on this, and uh, yeah, and uh, he is a leader of the via defract collaboration between uh, Polab and. Uh, and uh, the French groups, and uh, which has been an extremely nice collaboration, actually. So uh, I, I'm really happy to uh, have had this collaboration together with you, uh, Stefan. So please uh, <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> start your talk. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Knish, again. And uh, well, the pleasure uh, uh, is shared deeply. <laughs> it has been really nice to. Uh, it was a bit of luck that uh, I ended up in your group. and. But it has been a really nice uh, collaboration since all those years, and uh, hopefully we will you know, all this. So today I talk about an experiment that you you all do actually. It uh, concerns adhesive tapes and uh, peeling uh, adhesive tapes. And while well, this work is uh, essentially the work, uh, what I will talk today concerns the work of Vincent Desotti and uh, also uh, Marie Julie Dahl. They have uh, done their PhD with some years ago in our group. And Hélène Claudurand also, she's actually finishing her PhD now. And um, I will mention some of her results. And this work has been performed in collaboration with uh, uh, Loïc Vanel, uh, with whom I'm working uh, with uh, in Lyon uh, for many years now. He's at the university at the Institut Lumière Matière. And Pierre Philippe Corté, uh, a colleague who is in Paris, uh, in Orsay, exactly. So, uh, a bit of history, actually. So, just to start, um, the, the system that we are, we are using and, and filling our pressure sensitive ad adhesive tapes. Uh, and, and actually, Richard Drew who was a lab technician at 3M. Uh, he, was, he is the one who invented the first modern uh, tapes. And they were masking tapes, actually, and it was at the beginning of last century, well, about 100 years ago. And um, <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, so the, the goal actually was to, for workers, but where uh, at that time, the, the fashion was to have uh, some cars with two different types of colors. And in order to do that, they, they needed to, to prevent and to hide one, uh, one side. Um, and actually, by trying to find some different system, he, he invented the first masking tape. But actually, on his, on his first system, there was not enough glue on the, on the cellophane ribbon that he was using. They were putting just a bit in the middle of the, of the ribbon. And therefore, it was not working so well. And the workers, the painters, started to complain a lot. Uh, and actually, you can find this on the, on the net, apparently, kind of legend. But those workers, they were complaining, and they, they, they were saying, take this tape back to your scotch bosses uh, and tell them to put more adhesive on it. Because scotch are supposed to be kind of greedy. <laughs> not very nice for them. But actually, the funny thing is that they, they kept this uh, as a kind of uh, logo and uh, of their brand and uh, now in all their system uh, i mean the scotch is the brand and the name of the brand with even the tartan and you see that here on, on the right 
And nowadays, I mean, they have been really, uh, well, of course, we improve a lot their system, <laughs> but they are really uh, extremely uh, successful at 3M. Um, you know, uh, of course, their system. And for instance, in France, I mean, every year, more than 30 million of uh, worlds are sold every year for many and various uh, different types of uses. And uh, well, yeah, you see one masking tape, for instance, but. Uh, when you are moving out, and uh, it happened to me some years ago now, but, uh, well, you're, of course, you, you are using this type of system. And of course, when you start to peel on those objects, on those uh, typical uh, desktop uh, wall, uh, this is what you have all experienced. Uh, this uh, typical screechy, uh, annoying noise which is actually a signature of, uh, of uh, mechanical instability. And this is what I will really mainly, and what we have uh, with my colleagues uh, been focusing for many years now. Um, well, this noise, I mean, and this script can find it a bit uh, funny, but uh, however, <laughs> it's a real industrial challenge. And we have been contacted by some uh, companies that uh, are using, uh, I mean, all eventually preparing uh, in, uh, in their factory, some huge walls. And uh, the noise is really unbearable for the workers there. And they, they really need to avoid that. Also, I mean, when you have this, uh, so as you will see, this type of what we call thick slip instability, it damages the adhesive and also it can damage the, the motors and uh, of that system. So what is the origin of this uh, stick slip instability? I mean, here I schematically show you the, the peeling force as a function of the peeling velocity. And what you can observe is that you have two different branches that are increasing branch, stable branch, uh, or stable peeling. But in between, you have a decreasing branch here. And this will be, I mean, if you impose a peel velocity in this uh, range of uh, velocity, the fact that the peeling force decreases tells you that it costs less energy for the crack, the detachment to accelerate, and the are potentially instable. And uh, the freedom, I mean, for the detachment to adapt its velocity comes from the, the elasticity of the system, which is uh, which arises from, I mean, which comes from the, the ribbon is elastic. So actually, when you're peeling, you have two different types of um, or ways or the, for the, the glue to detach. And at, at low peeling, the, the, the glue behaves like a viscous rubber-like uh, system. While at very large uh, rate, peeling rate, uh, the glue behaves like as a glassy solid. Okay, um, uh, up to what we have done, actually, I mean, I mean it has been like for decades that's been known and studied this, uh, this mechanical instability. Uh, you can measure it indirectly by uh, looking at the oscillation of the forces, what you see on the left, or you can look and post mortem. I mean, on your tape, you can see marks that are left, or you can uh, listen to those acoustic emissions. And um, okay, the, the, the system we are considering and where the, this pressure sensitive adhesive tape, the 3M600, uh, I mean, it's our drosophile, yeah? <laughs> as my, my colleague uh, likes to say. Okay, this system is composed of, uh, you have a, a soft polymeric blend, a glue, which is 20 micro micrometer um, thick. And uh, which is deposited on a, on a rigid backing, uh, a film, an elastic film, which is around 30 microns. And the thickness is 19 millimeters. So actually, the, the detachment of uh, the steady detachment when you are peeling this, uh, this uh, adhesive tape can be described by uh, simply this uh, balance equation a la Griffith and uh, which is therefore formulated as a problem of fracture mechanics. So here you have the mechanical energy release rate and which you say that is equal to the fracture energy, which takes into account all the dissipation mechanism close to the crack tip associated to the advance of the, of the crack. 
And uh, depending on the geometry of your system, you can express this mechanical energy really space, which corresponds to the work of the peeling force and also the stored elastic energy that you have. Okay, and the, the very first uh, group and colleagues, I mean, Barkas and Mogis in the 80s, they have proposed a, a quasi-static approach to explain uh, the observation and in order to predict the, the frequency and, and the period of the six slip uh, instability. And what they have done is that they, this uh, balance equation, they, they assume that it's still valid during the six slip cycle. Okay, even though you are in an unsteady uh, regime, but they assume that you can still consider G equal to gamma. And then they assume that they have jumped between those here. I mean, it's, uh, I represent again the, the peeling force or the mechanical energy related rate as a function of the um, detachment uh, front speed uh, or the peeling velocity, if you want. And they assume that they have jumps been between the, the two stable branches. Considering that they have a uniform stretch of the ribbon, they can express actually the period, the time you, the period of the stick phase, which uh, is basically the time you spend on this uh, slow, stable branch, and then you jump, you jump directly on the on the fast branch. But there, I mean, you can also compute how, how long you will stay there. But you can uh, basically. Um, uh, this is really short and, and therefore you can neglect this aspect. And, and by using their measurement, um, uh, and they can actually express directly the period of the six slip instability, which appears uh, proportional to the length of the ribbon and inversely proportional to the peel velocity. That's what you see here. And actually, they could validate their, their prediction with uh, some experiments, as you see here. Or, and also we send direct measurements of the, the force and postmortem marks. However, there were several problems. They were able only, I mean, to, to validate the experiments at very low velocity, smaller than 0.6 meter per second. Even though they reported that they have still an instability, I mean, uh, at larger velocities. And, and also moreover, I mean, some colleagues, uh, Pierre Philippe, in, in, who is in Paris now, he, he performed some other experiments and the period of the six slip instability, they found it uh, to be constant. So, which is a direct contradiction with uh, this uh, bare results. So this was the, the, somehow the, the motivation for, for performing this experiment. And uh, so trying to test the limits of this quasi-static approach. Um, this has led us to, to observe uh, some new dynamic regimes uh, and, uh, and the importance of inertial effects. Um, and therefore, I will, I will show you two different uh, experiments uh, today. Where, where on, I mean, quickly, I will try to go a bit faster when we are feeling from a flat substrate here. And this is an experiment that originally the setup has been developed by uh, my colleague. And then it has led us to, to look at more smaller scales, at microscopic scales. And, uh, and uh, I will discuss that in the second part. So first, this experiment uh, of um, we, we, the setup again is, uh, is in Paris. Um, so we have an adhesive tape, which is on the flat substrate here. But interestingly, and the remarkable aspect is the fact that the the substrate here can be translated at a given velocity, at an impulse velocity that corresponds to the, the peel velocity that we, what is imposed by the motor here. And therefore this, uh, as a result, and as you can see here on this video, you are locking the peel angle and also the length uh, of the, the peel ribbon. In average, these two quantities are, are constant. And remarkably, I mean, the, uh, Pierre Philippe has been able to, to, to impose uh, such condition uh, from very low velocity up to four meters per, per second. And in order to do that, you need to have a six meter long uh, system. <laughs> 
uh, in order to have enough acceleration and to be in, uh, uh, at an impulse velocity up to four meters, which is uh, stable. So we have varied the pill uh, velocity, the pill length, and the pill length. And basically, this is a typical experiment uh, that we have uh, performed. And uh, imaging from the side uh, the ribbon, which is uh, filled, you can observe. I mean, here it's the position, the peeling point position in the substrate frame. And you see that it advances by steps. And then go, we are imposing a given uh, velocity, which was here 0.5 meters per second. And below, I show you the typical uh, velocity. Uh, you have a sudden jump, and uh, which can be much, which is much higher than the, uh, the, the impulse field velocity. And of course, to to be able to do that, we we are using a high speed camera, uh, and here it was uh, slowed. Uh, the movie was uh, slowed two hundred times. Okay, first um, uh, we have been able to. Demonstrate that there is a strong impact of the of the peel and go. Uh, here I show you a state diagram. And so here you have the the value of the peel and go and the peel velocity. The green uh, cross symbols correspond to the fact that we observe in this range uh, a stick slip uh, behavior, while the the blue dots correspond to a, a stable peeling. And in between, there is a kind of a region where it's uh, be stable. Sometimes you observe uh, something regular, or, and sometimes uh, um, a stick slip peeling. So this transition, I will come back to that. But what you see is that the range of velocity over which you observe um, stick slip is reduced uh, when at large peeling. So we understood that. So, well, first, I, I, I follow. Okay. Yes, uh, um, uh, So, what is uh, uh, stable peeling here? What you showed before in the video was that the regular stick slip. Okay. So what? You there? I think either my connection or yours. Yeah, system. now I can hear you, but uh, the, the connection uh, gets stuck when you start. Okay, so I was question. just wondering what, what you showed before, what you showed before in this uh, past video, was this uh, the regular stick slip in this graph? I'm sorry, I can hear, I mean, it's really bad. The, the regular stick slip is this. Uh, when, I, when I say re regular, uh, for instance, here you see that the, what I call stick slip, you have this, uh, Step, um, um, the, the, the position of the front is regular in the sense that the, the period of the cycle, the jumps are really equal. Uh, you, you have a bit of variation, but it's really, uh, it's extremely uh, regular and periodic. And what is the stable uh, one? Is it a without any stick slip? The blue dots. What, what does it mean? Yeah, when I yeah exactly when I when I say stable peeling, that means that the front is advancing just at the velocity that we impose without any insta unstable motion. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So so and but actually and I will come back to the transition and uh, because here the transition was not really clear and uh, I, I will come back and. The transition between a stable and uh, the instable detachment uh, will be uh, an important part of, uh, of the talk. <laughs> I will try to accelerate. I, I, I was a bit slow now. But anyway, so to go further, actually, um, and we have characterized uh, the, for instance, here you have the TPL example of the of the velocity um, uh, cycle. And here, I mean, which is the archetype of the typical uh, stick slip cycle with a long uh, stick phase and uh, instantaneous, very uh, short slip uh, phase with the velocity which can be very high, uh, up to 30 meters per second. And so this corresponds to like a period that it is in that case for uh, a, a small peel and go. And, and here, if you, you see, I mean, I, I represent the period of the stick slip um, cycle. 
so the duration of the stick should duration we, we normalize by the the length of the of the ribbon and here you see that as a function of the, the velocity and you have this uh, parallel scaling which corresponds to the the quasi static approach and prediction of barkens and noches so you recover this but this you recover it at small peel angle when you increase the peel angle and also the peel velocity the typical cycles of the stick slip they evolve actually and they evolve towards a, a quasi sinusoidal shape here and uh, so so therefore in that i mean and with uh, the duration of the stick period i mean what i will call stick it's a velocity which is more uh, lower than the, the impulse velocity exactly what uh, is plotted in what? that curve uh, stefan i i, I don't uh, get it you know yes, the velocity it's the velocity of, as a function of the of the duration of the six slip cycle okay. and we have uh, averaged it over many 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 different ones so that's why i put a phi actually in the front. but yeah, it's I'm a not... typical shape it's a typical shape of a of a six slip cycle so yeah, here then, I mean, the one to the right sorry? the one to the right with oscillations what what is that i i don't see it's it's again it's again a, a typical um, uh, cycle, if you want, that we have been measuring. And we, we could call it stick slip, and we still call it stick slip. However, this was obtained for a very large uh, uh, peel angle and large, larger velocity, impulse peel velocity. But what, the, what is so along what the want... y-axis? Y what is along the y-axis? Is my question. It's the, the, the velocity, the velocity of the detachment okay. form. Okay. It's the same thing. This is the on top. It's they are the same. It's just just to tell you that the typical shape of a velocity okay. uh, cycle as a function of time they evolve. Mm. I mean, uh, at, uh, you have the typical uh, view of what we know as a stick slip with a, a stick phase, nothing. Uh, the, the front is stuck, and then suddenly you have an increase of velocity. I mean, very sharp on very short duration, and on the here you see that. Uh, Actually, and you have the, uh, the whole evolution between the two, those two different regimes. And the interesting aspect is that when you are in this regime that uh, we, we have called inertial or dynamic, you have so a sinusoidal shape for this uh, velocity cycle, but also the period of the, the period is constant as a function of the velocity. And this corresponds to the two different uh, values or prediction and measurements that has been performed in the literature before us. And therefore here you could, by changing systematically the, the, the peel angle and the, and the peel velocity, you can see that you can get both actually. You have a, so the quasi-static regime, you will have a, a period of the 60 that behaves like a one over V. And while uh, at larger uh, angle and large velocity, you have a, it's constant. So you could, we could, uh, with both experiments, first we were able to reconcile with the, those two different uh, uh, results from the literature. Then how how we could in, and, and how can we understand that? And so very quickly, what we have done. So what were, I presented you at the beginning and the approach of uh, Barkins uh, and make, proposing this balance uh, uh, à la Griffith and what we have done, we have introduced some dynamical effects and the energetic costs in order to accelerate and decelerate the, the whole ribbon. So taking into account kinetic effects here. By doing so, very quickly, you can obtain an equation of motion of the detachment front uh, as this one here. And here it's the position of the peeling front. And so here, I mean, yeah, you have the acceleration. Yeah, with the effective with the mass of the ribbon. And interestingly, uh, at large peel angle and velocity, this term is negligible. Uh, we will discuss that a bit after. But you you can neglect this uh, this uh, this uh, part, and and therefore you obtain the, a simple equation of uh, an harmonic oscillator, and. This explains you why you obtain this quasi-sinusoidal shape in that case. And you can also predict the 
typical uh, period of those uh, stick slip values. And therefore, by doing the, by, uh, with this dynamical model, we can actually predict the overall behavior and the, uh, and the, the stick slip period as a function of the velocity and the p angle. So this was what we have done a long time ago, and, uh, and it was the PhD of Marie Julie. However, actually, so this was just a kind of introduction. I will try to go much faster. Uh, it's a bit bizarre, this, and we were wondering what does that mean? This uh, region where we have a B stable, uh, ever uh, regular uh, peeling, and or uh, an unstable peeling, and also by looking at uh, smaller scales. Here on, in the experiment, we have noticed that either on the substrate or on the on the ribbon, we have some things that are going on at much, at much smaller scales, um, and you can see those small marks. The large marks correspond to the macroscopic stick slip uh, that we I discussed already, and that we all know. But what you see is that at smaller scales, something is happening. And this is what I will uh, I will discuss now. So therefore, I, I uh, developed a very simple experimental setup uh, in my lab. And now we are all going to focus on much more scale. Uh, and putting the adhesive tape on a glass uh, slide here. Therefore, it is transparent. We can follow and observe the detachment front through the, the substrate. We, and we can also, with another camera, look the profile of the ribbon. And again, we are using a very high-speed camera. In that case, we are not uh, translating the substrate here. Therefore, the length of the ribbon, peeled ribbon, and the, the angle can evolve during the experiment. However, we are looking at, typically, this length here is about one meter, 50 centimeters to, to one meter. And while we are looking at few millimeters. So therefore, during the experiment, this length and this uh, angle can be assumed and considered to be constant. And depending on the position of your motor, uh, you can, you, we can change and we can make it, uh, we can vary it systematically. So now let's go back to the transition to this uh, stick slip. Um, here. I will show you, and this was the, the question for you, Marcel, you were asking me, what is it, uh, what, what's the, what do you call as regular? For instance, it's a regular peeling, which is really boring, nothing is happening. You can see the, the, the detachment front is advancing at the imposed uh, velocity. Okay, this is bad. If you increase the velocity, uh, the peel velocity, you observe this kind of behavior, which is the stick slip again, and the corresponding velocity uh, cycles that you observe here on, on the right. Okay, and again, you may already notice something at small scale, but what's going on in between? So, and in between, actually, I mean, on the very narrow range of velocity, you can observe some very mild quasi-sinusoidal oscillation of the detachment front. This was very difficult to observe, and we could only observe in when we were looking at very small scales in our setup. So, and by slightly uh, increasing the peel velocity on this narrow range that we could observe here, here the peel angle was 120 degrees, the length of the peel ribbon 50 centimeters, and here it's the, the position of the front as a function of time. And you see that when you increase the peel velocity, you have the amplitude of those oscillation, velocity oscillation that are increasing systematically. However, what you can notice is that the, the, the period of those oscillation, they, they, they are more or less constant. And so here it's for one given system, uh, one given um, uh, parameter range, uh, P length of 50 centimeter and a P angle of 120 degrees. And here I, I show you the period of those different uh, oscillations. And here, the, the red uh, circles correspond to, to, to what I call, well, to, to those oscillations. And as soon as you jump to this uh, typical stick slip regime, the period is much larger 
and then it decreases, it evolves as a function of the pill velocity uh, as uh, what we observed previously as one over V. Interestingly, at very large velocity, you recover exactly the same value of this uh, for the period of those oscillation. And of, it depends, uh, there is a narrow range of existence as a function of the, of the pill angle. For when you increase the pill angle, you can see it on a larger range of uh, pill velocity. And when you decrease it, I mean, it almost disappears. And it depends a bit, the value of those uh, periods depends slightly on the pill angle. So just to go quickly, uh, so therefore we had proposed this model that could explain what we were observing at large pill angle and large uh, driving velocities, uh, those dynamical effects. But interestingly, actually, uh, these, uh, we, we can have the same type of consideration just at the instability onset. If you look at uh, the peeling force as a, a function of the peel velocity, close to the maximum here, which is the, just the onset of the peel uh, of the stick slip, actually this quantity, the fluctuation in fracture energy, is, they, are, they are negligible. And therefore, actually you can, again, neglect uh, those quantities here, uh, this right uh, side of the equation, but not for the same reason uh, than previously. Nevertheless, this is the reason why you obtain very quickly the same type of uh, sinusoidal uh, and uh, velocity oscillation, and also the, the, the value of the, the period of the, the oscillation are the same, just at the end, they are constant, independent of the velocity, uh, but they are the same at just the onset of the stick slip uh, instability and at the at very large driving velocity and large spill angle when they are about to disappear. And on top of that, you can also even, even predict the, the fact that the amplitude uh, of, the, of those uh, velocity oscillation, they are increasing as the square root of the difference of the peel velocity with uh, just the value at the Yeah, uh, uh, velocity curve. So, and therefore, I mean, the the, the occurrence of the stick slip instability it can be um, considered as a, as a super critical bifurcation. And uh, we uh, very quickly, I mean, we are able, I mean, to numerically and also uh, analytically resolve this uh, equation of motion that I was uh, showing you. And uh, here I show you the, the prediction of the period of oscillation as a function of the peeling, uh, for instance, but both analytically, numerically, and experimentally, which is, um, and uh, we find a very good agreement. And moreover, this is just the, the amplitude of the velocity oscillation. This is just numerical as a function of uh, V minus BC, uh, square root of V minus BC. Okay, okay, and just very quickly, <laughs> I will try to continue. I will mention here, uh, so we are in the stick slip regime. And here I show you a typical uh, figure of the front position as a function of time. And you have this uh, typical uh, stick phase where the front is completely stick here. And then suddenly you will uh, end up in the slip phase at some point. It occurs here, yes. And this is the slip phase. But interestingly, when zooming in, looking at both small scales, you see that within the slip phase, the, the front is advancing by steps, by jumps, but at much smaller scales that, uh, than the one uh, I was showing you before. And even when you increase the peel velocity here, Finally, you, ended up, you end up in a continuous microstick slip um, regime where macros macroscopically, here's the front position, and this is exactly what I have here, the, the corresponding movie. The front is, if you look from far, macroscopically, the, the pin front advances at, at, the, uh, at the imposed pin velocity. But at very small scale, you see that you have jumps that are about 100 microns and occurring in, in well, you have a stick phase of a few tenths of microseconds. Okay, so what is it this? 
So if you go further, I mean, by looking at very small scale, the extending the, the region of observation in the transverse direction, and this is, I will, uh, as you see here, and pushing your camera up to very high rate, 700,000 frames per second here. What you observe is that actually it's yourself, it's me feeling, I mean, the, in average, the form goes from top to bottom. But you see that you have a transverse propagation of a crack of the detachment corresponding to the detachment form. Um, schematically, it's what I show here. So the, at very small scale, now we observe that actually the, the detachment front is uh, correspond to the propagation of a king um, at very high velocity between 600 to 900 meters per second in this, um, in this transverse direction. If you look also at the profile of your ribbon, it's what you see here. Here you're in the stick phase and here in the slip phase. And in the slip phase, you see that periodically the curvature of the ribbon is uh, released. And this is what I, from such a video, you can look at the profile. And I, I, I put in color the profiles just before and after a, a local jump, a, a micro slip. And what you see is that during the micro slip or accompanying the, the micro slip, you have a, a, re, a jump in the ribbon curvature. And therefore, you have a release of the bending energy of the ribbon. Uh, well, I will jump. <laughs> so we have been characterizing uh, both the micro slips and, uh, and period of, uh, of micro slips stick slip, let's say, and for numerous experiments at different velocity and lengths and uh, different P angles, and we have about several thousand of, about 10,000 of micro stick slip events. And here, for instance, I show you the amplitude of the micro stick slips uh, in micrometer as a function of the period, the period just preceding a, 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 a micro slip. And you see that you have a kind of nonlinear uh, evolution, which is independent of the length of the ribbon. So first, this is really different from the macro stick slip instance. Uh, and here I show you for a given length, uh, the effect of the, the peel angle. And you have um, a slight dependence, uh, both from the range of observation of both jumps and the amplitude. This is really my, if I show you, this in a log log scale, you can see that actually, actually, this nonlinear behavior, you have a scaling behavior between the amplitude of the micro slips and the period of the micro slips, with again a very small dependency of the peel angle. This is what I show here. For a given, uh, given period, you see that you have a systematic decrease with the peel angle, which is really mild. Uh, as I've shown you, there is, of course, we have seen that the, the bending uh, of the ribbon plays a role. So therefore, by simply uh, increasing the effective thickness of your tape, you can modify and you can increase the bending modulus of your, of your tape, which goes like to the cube of the thickness of the, of the tape. And here, again, I show you exactly the same, the amplitude of the micro stick slip as a function of the period uh, at the peel angle of 90 degrees and the given peel length for different uh, tape of increasing thickness. So for just uh, one, adding one backing, two backing, uh, three backing, and, and even four. Uh, and what you see is that you have a systematic increase of the amplitude of the micro slip and still you keep this uh, scaling behavior that goes like uh, one third of the period of the micro stick slip. So how can we understand that? And uh, what we have done, we have proposed uh, again uh, uh, to consider a local energy balance during the micro stick slip cycle. And what you, what you do is simply uh, to consider um, uh, during a micro stick, 
actually what you have is the, the glue is getting stretched. So you're storing some uh, elastic energy in the stretching of the glue. But also, as we have seen on the video, the, the ribbon gets bended. So you're storing bending energy during this micro stick. The micro slip, what we assume is the, the fact that the micro slip will suddenly occur uh, and will have a given size. I mean, this is the, the width of those transverse cracks. Uh, so this micro slip will occur when the glue is stretched up to critical length. And this is a strong assumption. Uh, and therefore, by doing so, you can, uh, you can write the following equation. But um, okay, the, the stored elastic energy in the stretching of the glue in the bending of the ribbon, what is equal to the fracture energy of the system with gamma, the effective fracture energy of your adhesive substrate joint. And plus again, I mean, what we are doing here, we, are, we will consider the excess of elastic energy which is released. Uh, and this is again, a generalization of the typical uh, Griffith uh, fracture cutting taking into account dynamical effect. Interestingly, uh, while it has been proposed both theoretically and also verified experimentally, we have participated in this uh, analysis and very recently uh, uh, a group in, in, in Paris have shown that, but just by, for instance, taking just the glue and performing typical stress strain measurement just of the of the typical uh, material that you use uh, for the glue, you can see that the fracture energy is equal to the integral of this uh, stress strain curve up to a given deformation, which is uh, dependent on this d actually. So, so, so actually, what does that mean? That means that this the energy accumulated in the deformation of the glue will be equal and fully and is fully dissipated when it detaches so we can uh, we can write that uh, this quantity is equal to gamma a mss and therefore you end up in the conversion of a bending to a kinetic energy uh, which is this uh, local energy balance during a micro six-week cycle and by very quickly with our geometry uh, and considering the amplitude and the period of the micro stick slip, you can express those two, um, two quantities uh, as a function of IMSS and TMSS, the amplitude and the period of the micro stick slip. And you ended up with the, this scaling uh, behavior. The amplitude of the micro stick slips are proportional to the period of the micro slips Slip with the power of one third, which is which corresponds to what we have observed uh, and measured experimentally. On top of that, there is a prefactor, and here actually you have the small dependency with the Pilanger because here uh, you have you, you see in this prefactor you have a very small one to the six uh, exponent, and therefore it explains why it was very difficult to see an impact of the Pilanger, even though it is present. And, um, and also you have the impact of the bending modulus um, of, uh, of your system and also the mass of uh, the ribbon, but because you are adding mass uh, by stacking different uh, layers. And here, what I show you is uh, just this renormalized uh, this quantity here as a function of the period of acoustic slip. For all our different experiments, you see that we can, uh, we can uh, rationalize our measurements. And what we do is that by letting one parameter, this parameter D, which is the critical elongation of the glue at which we are assuming that there will be a, a triggering of uh, the micro slip, we obtain a value D of uh, five microns, which is compatible with uh, our direct uh, side observation. And then, I mean, by point instance, uh, looking uh, I mean, with this value of D, actually, uh, you can explain and predict also what we have observed for our, for the systems with increased bending modulus, for instance. Yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry, I, I, I went very fast at the end because uh, of, uh, of this uh, small uh, cut, but uh, okay, just a short uh, summary. We have, um, actually, we have been studying the, the unstable feeling dynamics of an analysis uh, 
And what we have been able to, to show um, and to discover that actually the, the typical, uh, what we call thick sleep, uh, instability is made or is composed of two different instabilities that occur at different uh, scales, different spatial temporal scales. And uh, actually, these are two different instabilities. They have uh, different characteristics, range of existence, and control parameters. However, what is what is interesting is that the the, the archetypal, the typical stick slip uh, um, that we all knew corresponds to the fact when we have it is when we have the two different instabilities present, okay? Uh, the important message is the fact that kinetic effects are crucial uh, to understand both instabilities. And uh, you have a, a macro one, and what we, are, we have observed uh, is the new dynamical regime at the onset of the instability and also at large field angle and large velocities with those quasi sinusoidal oscillation of the detachment from velocity. And uh, the, the model that we have been developing uh, is able to predict uh, and the, the characterization of the macroscopic instability. At microscopic scale, uh, we have observed the dynamic fracture instability with the regular propagation of the uh, transverse fracture kinks. And this corresponds to the period, periodic release of uh, the bending energy of the ribbon. And our scenario, where we are considering conversion of bending to kinetic energy, allows to explain the scaling behavior that we have observed between the, the amplitude and the period of the, the microscopic loop. However, the physical origin of the fracture kinks are still uh, not completely known. And they are it seems that there is a velocity threshold for their appearance, which is, um, which we don't know. Uh, just quickly uh, to conclude, uh, just to let you know that we are, what we are doing uh, now, because up to now uh, I consider the very smooth, homogeneous and uh, clean system. But now uh, Ellen, who is actually finishing her PhD, but she's able by uh, peeling, uh, doing the same type of experiment, but, but now on micro textured and micro pattern substrate, uh, eventually soft or hard, actually, meaning that the, the uh, substrate can eventually deform. And what we have been, and what she has been able to, to show, on one hand, she is able to tune the level of adhesion, the peel force, if you want. Uh, but also she is able to control the instability uh, in two different ways. She is able to eventually trigger the instability, the stick slip instability and force it, or she is able by a very mild uh, disorder, she is able to, to make it disappear. So, and another aspect I wanted to mention is the work of uh, Tom. <laughs> And uh, I'm sure he has already told you and you have been aware of this, but uh, and this is a still uh, ongoing work that uh, I hopefully will continue and will pursue with uh, Renault, Tom, and Anthony Jorgen. Is the fact that the, uh, the triggering of this six slip instability could come from a, a thermal weakening mechanism. And here, for instance, I show you uh, with an infrared camera. Uh, in this geometry, so you completely uh, so what you see on on the right is the fact that you can even see the the substrate, and you see here the 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 ribbon. And I will show you a video. And what you observe is that during the peeling, the color code is uh, correspond to to what the infrared camera gives, and you have locally what you observe uh, during the stick phase. You have an increase, a mild increase of uh, one or two degrees uh, of, in temperature, in degrees Celsius, at the crack tip. And this, uh, Tom, and uh, you can ask Tom, he has developed a very nice model that could explain such, uh, such effect, actually. So, and I, actually, what is really nice, and I started my, my presentation, my talk, by showing you. Uh, a typical uh, peel uh, a diagram showing the peel force as a, as a function of the peel velocity, which is at the origin and how we can explain uh, and derive all the characteristics of uh, the stick slip motion. 
What is nice is that, uh, and in particular, the fact that you have a, a range uh, in velocity where the, the pin force decreases. The fact is that it, the, the decrease of force and the shape, the overall non-monotonic -monotonic, uh, evolution of the pin force as a function of the pin velocity, it's still debated. And actually, Tom has been able to, to develop a model which can explain the overall shape of this uh, of this curve. And uh, and with that, I will uh, I will let you ask him some questions. <laughs> but uh, I, I will finish here because um, I'm a bit late, I believe. <laughs> but I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Stefan, for a really interesting uh, talk. And um, yeah, questions, please. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I the, the last ones there where you looked at the pattern substrate, and I was wondering what would, could one instead pattern the the glue pattern the glue on the tape in a similar way, and could that perhaps change the sound and make it less of a problem in industrial settings? Um, the again, I, instead, of the, instead of the substrate. Ah, ah, okay, I understood. So, so maybe I will repeat just to be sure because uh, again, the, the sound was not good. Uh, what you are asking is that instead of modifying the, the substrate, it will be to modify the tape. Yes. Yeah. Indeed, I, I mean, and uh, actually, it has, I mean, there are a lot of things in the literature about that, and and uh, more on the chemistry side or physical chemistry, changing some properties of the glue itself, mm -hmm. and and that I mean, why we we decided to to take a different uh, path and propose a different way, but indeed, uh, this will be possible. Another fact that this has not been really performed in in the literature, but uh, and which will be a bit more original. Instead of instead of modifying the glue, because in all what I've shown you, actually the the glue doesn't play a, a, an important role, which is a bit surprising. <laughs> but but actually, it's more the the ribbon actually on which the glue is, uh, is uh, deposited. And actually it will be interesting, but uh, probably a bit more difficult and because we, we don't have such a system. It will be to, to pattern eventually the, the backing so the, of the ribbon. And, uh, and, and uh, this could have, uh, because you will, for instance, modify this uh, banding modulus and, uh, and and this will affect surely the, the the detachment front dynamic for the same glue actually. So for all what we have done, well, we have been working a bit with some engineers with 3M. They, they gave us some typical systems, but yeah. uh, I have uh, with different rheology of the glue, and we have uh, seen some impact. But on all what I've shown you, and still we will continue. Uh, we, we keep the same system, the same type of tape, and we are playing with the, either the substrate or the backing. But, uh, but of course, I mean, uh, if you change the glue, the rheology of the glue, you will have, uh, you will have different, uh, very different behavior as well. I mean, I hope I answered your, yes, your comment. Uh, absolutely. Could you get some money from 3M to work on that? Well, uh, I could have, I had some uh, years ago, um, I, I had a collaboration with um, a very known uh, professor in in Paris who is working at the uh, ESPCI. And he, he has a lot of contact with 3M and via him, we were able to, to work a bit with 3M, but uh, actually, it doesn't, we didn't follow up, so we'll see. Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but uh, while 3 is a big company, it's a bit difficult to reach them from, from time to time. However, they, 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 they sent us different systems, uh, which was really interesting. Uh, I mean, we have uh, tapes, 
uh, made of uh, different glue and, uh, with a very different rheology. And we could, we have published one paper on that uh, uh, where we, we showed the impact of the, the rheology of the glue and from specific rheology on, on the, the peeling dynamic. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I have a question, if I may. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for a great talk, Stefan. I was wondering. Hello, <laughs> I was wondering. Uh, I, I was left with the feeling that the macro instability might be related to the shape of the G of V curve and uh, and the parameters which which you pull over your tape. And for the characteristics of the micro slip instability, I wondered whether they were not related to the lump wave dispersions in the in the bent plates that would uh, give you some that, that would give you some wavelengths which are propagating the information fastest and mm -hmm. might have something to do with the amplitude of the kink and the velocity of the transverse. I mean the, the velocity of your transverse uh, well, of your uh, actually what yeah. it could yeah, be related I, I, to the fastest group velocity that you have in the lump wave dispersion curve. Mm. So here what uh, I, I I jumped, I didn't mention that, but but actually what you the, the typical uh, kink mm. velocity, the fracture kink transverse propagation, we could observe that it typically it typically proceeds at the the group velocity of the bending wave. So this is a lamp wave, right? That's the yeah, yeah, yeah. a zero mode of the lamp waves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And this is what we what we believe. So you can you so if you follow if you follow the deformation of your ribbon together yep. with the deformation of the kink, you you could follow whether this is uh, the fastest the fastest mode in lamp wave in a zero. Yeah. You, you mm -hmm. could see it in your ribbon as well, right? Well, actually, I mean, the, the point is that, well, again, what you have to be aware is the fact that, okay, um, this is like, it pro they propagate at typically 600, 900 meters per second. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, for instance, few millimeter and the typical width of the kink here, it's uh, 100 micron. So this is, yeah, and to be able, I mean, uh, unfortunately for the moment, I well, I could do, I could borrow two high speed camera that I could synchronize, but indeed, I um, what I do is that I ever observe the through the transparent plate mm -hmm. and all all the profile, but I haven't done uh, both at the same time. <laughs> but uh, yes, yes, I uh, I agree with uh, what 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 you told me. <laughs> What, what happens with this uh, kink uh, propagation if you introduce some randomness or this pattern that you have? Uh, any, okay. Have you tried to do that? Or it reminds me a bit yes. of, the, of the fracture propagation where we see these things moving sideways also sometimes. Yes, yes. So, so what you uh, what you can observe uh, even in, in our system, uh, cleanest one or if you have some small defects, uh, for instance, in the center, you could have the a triggering, uh, and you can have the propagation uh, side, both, uh, on both sides, actually. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what we have observed. Or, or you, we have observed several ones that could be triggered at the same time. But uh, here on this example, um, actually. It, it, it is triggered on, on the side uh, of the ribbon, actually. Uh, well, maybe there is a bit of tilt, and that's why it goes only uh, one way. But it, it, on one experiment, it will go from the left to the right, and on the other one, from the left, <laughs> from the right to the left, or eventually propagate, uh, from, I mean, will be triggered by, a, by a, a defect. However, and this is interesting what you're mentioning, <laughs> interestingly, for instance, we have performed, um, but it's much more difficult to observe when you, we, we are putting, uh, adding a lot of defects and uh, some patterns. But we are, it seems that we are, most of the time we are killing the instability. We are, in a way, you, you, you may observe some, uh, some small jumps, local. 
but probably uh, propagating overall the overall uh, the overall width of the tape. So, but it depends also. I mean, depending on the type of texture, because uh, I could observe uh, with um, uh, with some typical uh, texture um, with a non-homogeneous uh, texture, but you are forcing actually the this uh, sideways propagation, but at a given uh, at a given size. Actually. So you can even force it, or you can if you put a bit of randomness. But I'm I'm not completely sure about that. But it, it is some observation. In some cases, we the the instability disappears. So this is the next step, and this is what I would like to continue to investigate. Eventually, uh, when can you make it disappear, or when can you really force it? And and also depending a lot on the because we have that. I mean the fact that if the substrate can eventually deform. This has a, a strong impact on the instability and on the level of uh, the adhesion <laughs> on the pill four. I can just tell you that. Literally. So if you kill uh, <laughs> if you kill this, then you also get rid of the noise, right? Uh, yes, yes. Normally, actually, it will be uh, well. The yeah. Mm. The, the the sound will will be the the the, the acoustic emission will, will be not there of course yeah. but, or maybe I mean you may have some because when it detaches and if it detaches at small scales you you will trigger some small uh, uh, acoustic emission locally but it won't be the same actually so you're modifying noise. <laughs> Is there any other questions? I think we can have maybe one more. We, we have a PI meeting very soon, so I, I think I have to leave. Oh. <laughs> so uh, it started at two o'clock. So maybe you can take one question and then we, we, we stop. Is there any other questions? Or? I saw Fabian was raising a hand. Fabian? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can. Ah, okay. great. <laughs> Uh, so thanks first, Stefan, for this uh, very nice talk. Uh, I think I have a uh, question that uh, Knut uh, asked, so that's why I lower my hand. I was wondering uh, if in your setup you always observe this uh, propagation of the transverse kink or crack from left to right, or if sometimes it can nucleate uh, in the middle of the, the tape as well or from the other side. So another question okay, that so I, I have is... Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also what, uh, how, how do you understand that uh, this crack that nucleates from one side mo uh, mostly propagates in the transverse direction and that it's quickly stopped its uh, forward motion somehow? Well, this is not so clear actually, but energetically it's probably, I mean, much, uh, it costs less to propagate sideways than to advance. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure about it. Uh, this is still uh, a bit open, but we, we know also. I mean, if you look at how the stress is transmitted uh, within the glue, we know that uh, at a given and typically at rock scale, also 100, 200 microns. Uh, and this is uh, there is an old prediction and uh, calculation about that. But you have a um, uh, head of the crack. Uh, you have a zone that is in compression and even shear, actually. And this will correspond oh. to this zone, actually, where you probably have a maximum, a local maximum stress. And this is what I, what I think. And then as soon as the, the crack is, a, well, defect or micro crack is triggered, then uh, energetically it costs less for the whole ribbon just to, to go sideways than to, to go to further advance. But uh, but still, I mean, we need to to. Okay, so it could be a kind of mixed mode uh, factor. But again, uh, yeah, we, you can observe the the, the prediction uh, from above sideways, and, and yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Okay, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> thank you, uh, Stefan, so much for this uh, very nice talk, and uh, hope you're very to... welcome. <laughs> to talk with you soon again and um, yeah sure sure definitely 
Well, uh, I promise next time I will talk about fluid dynamics and bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> but this was perfect. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, thanks so much. Well, thank you. And well, I, I just want to say that uh, it will be really great and we will continue uh, to work on this because uh, I believe the, the work of Tom uh, and together with Renault and you, uh, I am convinced that this is really nice and just above the interaction with the local increase of temperature and, um, and with the dynamic of the front and the rheology of the glue. Uh, uh, it's really exciting. And, uh, let's cross our fingers with the, the, the different uh, application for some money, but uh, but still, even without uh, without those funding, we, I'm sure we will uh, be able to continue on that. And this is a uh, this is a nice uh, direction. <laughs> yes, sure. I agree. perfect. I hope so too. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> take care. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. A bientôt. <laughs> bientôt.